by Gary in the Civic Center. Here's Kevin Luner. Thank you, Dennis. Good morning, everyone. And our guest today is Rhonda Pierce from Twin Cities Development. It's the first of the year. I thought we'd get her in here and discuss all the things that uh, Twin Cities Development has on its plate as we look into 2013. And first of all, uh, we should talk about the fact that a number of local companies are looking to expand, right? Um, yeah, 2013, we're seeing a lot of activity. We had a, we feel like we had a great year in 2012, and we're hoping 2013 will be better. Um, we are working with about three or four local companies on some expansions. Um, so I guess stay tuned. Um, there'll be some major job announcements here soon. Uh, look for that in the wehavejobs.net website, and uh, just kind of keep you posted on that. So that should be coming out soon. All right. How is the uh, how is the uh, food? Uh plant doing up there by the airport? Um, they've been operational since uh, like the first week in November. Um, I think there's been, you know, a few a few hiccups when you're when you're trying to move from California to Nebraska. So, um, you know, some people get into that job and didn't know exactly what they were in for. So they have had some turnover. But, um, you know, they're plugging along and producing. I don't think they're at the levels they'd like to be yet because there's an efficiency curve of learning, you know, how to do this. So. Yeah. Okay. How many people are they employing up there? I think it's 24 or 26, yeah. right in that number. Okay. And they've got them. I know they were a little worried about getting the employees, but they haven't had any. Uh, like you said, a little turnover. Yeah, but they, they've just said, you know, people get in there and, um, you know, it's not what they expected or, you know, work for a while. And, and, and it's, it's a different kind of, you know, a different kind of work. Not everybody is cut out to do that, so. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, you are going to go to a trade show, is that right, very soon? I leave this morning for Atlanta. I'll be in Atlanta for three days helping Nebraska Public Power and the state of Nebraska in a, in a booth for uh, Nebraska. And it's um, a processing and equipment expo. Um, it's focused on food manufacturing and other processing, like egg processing, but it also includes um, the equipment manufacturers and suppliers, so there might be some spin-off companies that we might be um, taking a look at. We do have some appointments set up already. Um, I'm there basically as support to help uh, the state and Nebraska Public Power, but any leads that are generated, you know, I can work those leads. So that's that's really helpful, and it and it's cost effective for our organization to partner because it's very very expensive to do these trade shows. Um, there's 1,100 exhibitors. Um, the trade show space is like 435,000 square feet, so it's a huge, huge show. So where is this trade? Where in Atlanta is it? Um, you know, I'm, I haven't even read my itinerary. I figured I'd get to the airport <laughs> and get to my Cause hotel. Because I've, I've been to Atlanta a few times, so I was figuring maybe you could tell me. But, yeah, um, um, I, but it's, it's a wonderful I'm sure it's town. a convention center. Yeah. but um, Yeah, I, and, and these shows go from 9 in the morning till 7 o'clock at night. So, I mean, people think it's a vacation, but it's, it's yeah, a lot it's of work. Yeah, it's a lot of work, right? So, yeah, I'm sure I'll have some tired feet when I get back. All right. Okay. Let's talk about the uh, McKinley Project a little bit. Um, that is uh, going fairly well, right? I, I think as far as our end, um, we submitted the last documents that, that we feel um, so that we can get release of funds. And what release of funds means is that's the official notice from the state that we can start spending money. So we, we turned that paperwork in about a week ago, and I'm just waiting for that um, release from the state to say, you know, go ahead, you're, you've got all your documentation, you can start spending money. Um, the property then can be, I mean, right now it was in the contract that they didn't purchase the property until that step had passed. So as soon as that happens, we'll start, I mean, the city of Gearing will start rolling on that project. All right. And then if people want to be, uh, the, 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 when I was, Talking to some people, they say, "Okay, low-income homes." No, nope, um, they're affordable. They're homes. affordable homes. Okay, they're not low-income homes. They, there is a guideline still, but um, I would say 80 percent of the people in this valley would qualify as the income levels that are required. It's 100 percent of the average median income. So the ho homes are going to be in that 120 to 135 thousand dollar right. range. Three bedroom, two bath um, garages. I mean, they're going to be nice homes. And the Garing High School um, construction class has committed to build um, three homes over the first two years. So they'll be building some of those homes as well. So um, kind of local partnerships there as well. All right. There's a possible Magnolia might be um, Yeah, we, th that's a possibility that um, may order one of them manufactured home. And uh, the city hasn't really decided. Uh, we, we have a commitment to build five homes over three years. I think we'll move a lot faster than that. I think you'll probably see those five homes over a year and a half to two years. And, um, you know, those those other homes other than high school and possibly Magnolia could be bid out. They could be 
Um, you know, we could t work with Habitat for Humanity. There's all kinds of scenarios that, that could happen. Mm -hmm. um, but the city is responsible for those. So we can't just sell the lot and have somebody build a home because that doesn't that doesn't qualify for the city being, you know, the builder of five homes. Okay. And then McKinley would go down, the school itself, to the demolishing of the school might happen maybe in another year or so? Well, you know, the timeline on that is still up in the air because, um, you know, we've, we've talked about it, and the way we wrote the grant, the grant is to build the home. So the money is not to tear down the school, but as we sell those homes, we can use the money, it's called program income, to, to further the home activity on that project. So um, there's talk of having maybe even Gary loan the fund some money and tear the school down sooner so that you don't have people move into a new house and then have all the dust and debris from the, the, the school being torn down. Um, but again, that just kind of depends on you know where we're at money-wise, how soon these um, houses get built. Um, but I anticipate probably the school coming down about uh, when the houses are substantially completed but not occupied. All right, we'll take a break and then we'll get right back to uh, other items of note right after this. With large, spacious rooms, a distinctive and clear sound system, exhilarating images on five jumbo screens, high speed video streaming, and monumental catering by the meat shop, you need to call West Nebraska's premier multifunction facility for your next flight? business meeting. Call 436 6888 or visit us at www.garingciviccenter.com. I live off the county. The Garing yeah. Civic Center. This is how satisfied feels. All right, we are back on News Extra. We have Rhonda Pierce here with Twin Cities Development. We're going over a number of things that are going on here in the community, economic development-wise. And uh, one of the other things we wanted to talk about is uh, uh, the apartments downtown uh, that uh, uh, you guys uh, are in, do that, and have, have done a great job of those apartments downtown up at the uh, former Scottsbluff National Bank. And uh, so what's the latest on that? Well, first of all, I got to give credit to Mike Sarchette, who's the construction project manager and our uh, crew that, that's working on those, and also the subcontractors that have had a lot to do with that. Uh, I just looked back at the files, and we got our occupancy permit for phase one on um, January 25th of 2012. So we're almost a year to the date of opening phase two. I mean, pretty, pretty close. So um, we're, we're trying to, uh, what I understand is the fire alarm system is the last piece that we're waiting for. Carpets laid, the uh, uh, appliances are installed. We had um, a little snag with countertops with Christmas and a bunch of people wanted to order countertops for Christmas. So we kind of got put back a little bit there, but those are in and they look great. Um, so right now it's the uh, fire alarm system and then we're getting ready to call for an occupancy permit. So we're hoping and um, if this was wood, I'd knock on it, but um, we're hoping to ask for, so we can get people in there by the 1st of February or shortly after. Wow. So, yeah. That's good. How many more apartments in phase two? It's uh, there was nine? Nine. Um, there's six in phase one, and, and three of those six have to be income qualified um, tenants, and, and most of those um, that we have are nursing students. Um, phase two is three of the nine apartments. Um, have to be income qualified, and, and a lot of that's because of the additional money we put into the project. So, okay. yeah, but everybody, uh, all the first six are uh, occupied. The first six have been occupied basically since day one. Um, we've had tenants in there; they just came up on their year lease renewals. Um, we do have one tenant that's going to have to uh, move. He's going to move to phase two because he doesn't qualify on his income level anymore. So he's going to move into a a market rate apartment on the other side, which is, you know, kind of nice. That's great. That's all He doesn't want to leave, so that's yeah. exciting. Um, and then, um, you know, basically, we're just plugging along. We've got um, five or six of the units already committed. We have down payments, and they're excited to move in. All right, so those are working out good. That's the whole idea, was to get some housing downtown and get downtown vibrant again, Well, right? and I think you'll see, I don't know if you drive along um, Main Street, uh, Rick Wayman had built apartments um, in the old boutique building, and now uh, Neil Blumenkamp is putting apartments. He purchased the old the Taekwondo and Scottsboro screen printing building, and he's going to be moving forward with some, with some apartments up downtown. So that's pretty exciting, and I'm, um, he came and looked at our project as well. So I think he has a pretty good idea and is moving forward with that. Wow, that's fantastic. That's the idea. Yeah, it's, it's so kind of exciting to see. We just need to kind of get 
Maybe another restaurant down there. Uh, or two. Or, yeah, <laughs> or three. Be, be good. I, yeah, we, we have some restaurants that are that are looking at the area actually, and um, you know, just a matter of finding the right the right buildings. And uh, there's not a lot of vacant buildings. So um, when you when you go up and down Main Street, there's three or four, but there's not a lot. Yeah. Okay. Real quick, uh, the downtown Gearing redevelopment uh, application. You'll be resubmitting that in March. Yep, hopefully third time's a charm. Um, we talked to the state and found out that there was just a few areas they wanted us to expand on. And so um, Rick Wills is kind of in charge of that program. And we're going to have a meeting with the downtown merchants and the downtown gearing group on February 7th um, to talk about maybe honing in on what, what if we were to hire a consultant, what exactly are we going to have them look at? Because gearing is a different community than Scott's Bluff where their facades are maybe in better shape but maybe the buildings are older and maybe some more energy efficiency and that sort of thing. So we just want to hone in on exactly what the downtown wants to do because we were kind of vague in that application and after they pointed out, um, it, it does make sense and we do need to hone in on that a little bit of, you know, exactly if you're going to go out and hire a consultant tomorrow, what are you going to hire them to do? Mm -hmm. And I don't think we were as clear as we need to be. So it's just a matter of changing that, adding some detail and getting that application resubmitted. So. All right. Well, I know the downtown merchants are excited about getting something done, right? Yeah, they are. And um, but again, you have um, 20 different people in the room. You have 20 different opinions. So we've got to come down to what does the group want to do? What's priority one, priority two, and priority three? So it's it's really important to kind of come to a group consensus on on what they want to do. Yeah. Okay. All right. Very good. Better let you get off and uh, <laughs> grab that plane. Okay. All right, very good. Rhonda Pierce here from Twin Cities Development. So beginning today, good deal. No ATM okay. fees nationwide. So right. shall I?